Hey, thanks everyone for joining me. I'm excited to talk about camping versus RVing. Summertime is coming up and it's, it's hard to believe it's, you know, April and it's time to like make reservations. So I have Denise with me today and she's done this far more times than I have. So I'm going to let her share. So welcome, Denise. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So, so tell us about your last camping or RV experience. Maybe start there. Yeah. So ironically, it was supposed to be this week. I should have been calling you from that, oh, but my kids got sick. So uh, that had to be canceled. However, my last one we just did that we like to do yearly is um, in the middle of literally nothing but desert. It's um, near Ridgecrest um, in California. Um, it's about uh, near Bakersfield, Adelanto area. And there is just nothing but miles and miles and miles of just literally nothingness. And so you just take your RV out in the middle of the nothingness. And um, it's so much fun. It's rural camping. Um, we do go with our RV for that trip. Um, I think it'd be a little bit too difficult to do tent camping. Um, but now that I have kids, we take our, their motorcycles, ours, you know, and I mean, you can just go for hours uh, riding around everywhere. It's fabulous. It's cool because it's next to the army base. So we get to hear all the sonic booms or actually get to see all of them fly by. So my kids get super excited with that. Um, and it's just really great weather. Normally, like towards the end of the year, it gets a little colder. Um, but we pretty much do that like every November um, around Thanksgiving time. You don't have to make reservations. So it's really nice for like those last minute things, especially when you have kids and you're like, let's just go. Um, it's so much fun. It's very relaxing. Your ability to see the stars at night because you're so far away from civilization is like unheard of. There's only probably one other place that I get as good as a, a view um, of that that's closer to the city but uh, like it's just you do your little campfire you know it's it's a matter of like you can't see your hand in front of you if everything's off if your RV lights are off like it's literally it's pitch black you hear all of the nice you know sounds the ambiance just everything we're like four miles off the road it's fabulous. Like I super highly recommend for those in that specific area that can travel there. It's one of my favorite, favorite places. And it's literally off the beaten path. <laughs> Which is fun part. People are like, you're where? And I'm like, I know just when you see an opening in the gate, you make a right. <laughs> like it's that type of thing. Um, but it's amazing. My kids will literally like, they're six and they will literally beg me like, mom, when are we going camping there? when are we going to go, you know, ride our motorcycles? And they're just, they can live in the dirt all day long and it's very clean. So, um, ironically it's very clean. Um, and it's, it's just, it's so nice. It's so relaxing. It's a great disconnect, um, that I think most of us need. Oh, <laughs> so true. Yeah. So how do you handle like the electronics? Do the, is this like there's no connection or it's a timeout. So, <laughs> well, yeah, no, for the most part of the day, like we just choose to have them off. Um, we do actually have, um, you know, cell phone service. Um, so it's not that far disconnected, um, but it feels like you are disconnected from the world because of just how to get there, where you're at. Um, not really anybody else around for miles. Um, so in terms of my kids, like what we do when we go camping, like they know, like it's going to be very limited screen time if screen time. And honestly, when you're out, you know, and there's things to do and there's just dirt to play with, like they get back into that flow, into that creativeness, and they don't even ask or care about electronics and screen time. I half the time don't need to do anything with that. Nice. They don't ask for it. They're grounding most of the time, just, you know, with their bare feet on the ground, walking around and having fun, um, that they really don't ask for it. Don't need it. Maybe at night when we come inside, because uh, during November, right? Like the, um, sun comes down a little bit earlier than we're used to. Right. And, um, 
I won't put on like too much of the lights and stuff for them so that they can kind of just reset their circadian rhythm. And um, that's might be when like, Hey mom, can we watch a little bit? I promise you they get through five minutes and then they knock out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Oh my gosh. Like such a mom win. <laughs> yeah, that is. So yeah. tell me about some tips about food. Do you have to pack everything with you when you go here or? Yes, definitely some prepping because we're so far out. It's not, especially with an RV um, at, the, at this specific location, it's not the most ideal to need to go back and forth unless you actually haul a separate cart with you, which just kind of makes it a little bit more difficult. So we do prep. Um, we normally are there up to two weeks. <laughs> so oh, wow. we, we, we prep for a while. <laughs> yeah. um, and normally we don't go by ourselves. We do go with our parents who also have their own RV. So we'll do like a half and half, like you bring this half, I bring that half to make sure that everyone has everything ready to go. Um, so we do have like a small refrigerator in the RV. Um, anything that doesn't need to be in there, we have like our separate big um, like Yeti container that we'll put dry ice or ice in and throw everything in there um, and just basically go about it that way. So there is a lot of, you know, prep work that has yeah. to go into it. But once you're there, you don't have to think about anything. And that's like the whole purpose of camping is just. I just don't want to be responsible for any thought processes that take more than like five glucose units. <laughs> right. Yes. Oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah. So it is besides the prepping, like it's just, it's so much fun. It's so much fun to disconnect. It's just, um, there's nothing like it. And with how busy our lives are now, it's just gets crazy at the thought of disconnecting. But when you're finally there, time slows right? Like yeah. if ever, anyone's ever like gone through that, it's just like, how is the time feeling? Like, how has it only been two hours or two hours to me at home would have oh. been, I got nothing done. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. I love that aspect of it. It's just when I say a week and a half to two weeks in our busy schedule time, we're like, wow, that's a long time. But when you're there, you feel like you're there for a month wow. and it's exactly what you needed to just disconnect, re-energize, get you know, pumped back up again, wow. um, build your passion for whatever it is that you were looking to disconnect from in the first place and kind of reignite all of that, which is, which is the part that I love about it. Right. And then spending time with family like that, what a great way to connect. Um, before you head into like the craziness of the holidays. Oh yeah. So <laughs> yeah, definitely reconnecting. I think it's great for my kids because um, I have, so I have twin boys oh, wow. and um, they're identical twin boys and um, they're six right now. So we've been doing this since they were little. Um, before that, I used to tent camp. I never did RVing until I had kids just okay. because of the weather and just all of those things. Before that, I did environmental camping. Like I was straight, like, let's go and let's just rugged. Talk away. about environmental camping. What do you mean by that? <laughs> so there's actually environmental camping parks. And what they are are basically also, uh, it can be a camping ground where, you know, you have something assigned or a, a camping site assigned. But there's no bathrooms, not even a hole in the ground or like anything like that. Like it's literally you dig, you go oh, okay. and you cover it back up. And so there's really just nothing you're, you're, it's environmental. And so, um, that's as rugged, I think, as you can get when it comes to tent camping. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but it's so much fun. Like if you're able to, and if you feel like up to like a nice little challenge, it really is so much fun. That really shows, at least for me, what it did was like, give me just much more appreciation for the things that I do have, right? Something right. as simple as a toilet that yeah, exactly. and flushes. I'm like, oh, this feels great. Right. Um, yeah. Showers, you know, all of those things. But also just kind of really reconnecting back to your roots. And I don't know how, but like another best way to say that. And what I mean by that is like, just to relax, not have the day-to-day -day worries, not, you know, freaking out, fight or flight 24-7 about work, about not getting this done and checking this off. And it's like, you just get to be present and in the moment. And there is literally nothing like that. 
like yeah. nothing like that that beats it so um you know having to figure things out and um just having fun with others that are, are around there that you may know or may not know um that yeah. connection with people you know like it's there's just nothing that beats that we don't have that anymore yeah you're right you're right so it's where are some places that you can do that at? do you have to is it just literally where you're allowed to maybe park your car or because I know <laughs> at least California it seems like and other states may be like this too but I'm most familiar with California you know you can't even sometimes park near the the beach. right and you know I've parked near the beach and sometimes you know the cop is swinging by and you're in the middle of a nap and they're like nope you can't you know move along or you know all of that so maybe oh yeah a bit about I've done that, that too <laughs> <laughs> driving eight hours please just let me take I know I just want to take a little nap here <laughs> I'm like not doing anything <laughs> totally so one of my favorite places in California actually it's about a four hour drive from where I'm at I'm in Southern California um it's called Montaña de Oro um, and it's near, uh, it's like 30 minutes above Pismo Beach, 20 minutes, um, but that like Bay Area. Right. So it's like, it's probably my favorite place to camp, like tent camping. Oh, like that's the second place. So the, the one I was talking about with the RV, I mean, the sky is just yeah. amazing. But at Montaña de Oro, you get that sky, but it's the weirdest thing because you're right up against a mountain and a quarter mile from the ocean. So it's like your brain takes a while to like, wait, so where am I? You know, like you're in between these two little worlds. Yeah. And the nice part is that at night you're up against these mountains and you either are environmental camping or right next door, they have just regular tent camping spots with your nice little, you know, hole in the ground and right. <laughs> that works. Um, and you're, you're up against the mountain. Like you wouldn't know any better that you were not directly in a mountain per se and right next to the beach. And about mm, a quarter of a mile, no more than that, you're literally in this little bay. And so just to hear that has this massive rock you can climb if you're, you know, yeah. if you want to get up on there and have the waves crashing in between, it's amazing. Um, but you hear the waves all night. It's like natural, you know, that calm music yeah. space that people pay for to listen to at night to put them to bed. You right. have you can see nothing but stars because you're not near civilization. It's about a couple miles away and um, it's gorgeous. It's beautiful. You do have to be a little careful with, uh, you know, friendly neighbors in terms of animals. Yeah. <laughs> so I have seen a couple foxes there, um, you know, among the campground. Other than that, you're getting your regular raccoons and stuff, nothing major. Um, but there are a lot of, because it's on the beach, there are tons of trails that you can either go into the mountain or onto the beach. So it's like you have the best of these both uh, two worlds and it's gorgeous. Once my kids get a little bit older, because it will get pretty cold, um, totally doing tent camping there with them. Wow. <laughs> totally yeah. Doing. Yeah. It's amazing. We go normally in the morning. Um, we'll go wake up a little early before sunrise and then um, walk over to that little cove area that's there, that little bay, and then climb that massive rock. It's probably about two stories high, um, yeah. but it had, there's, there's you know, a little spot that you can hang on and, and climb up. And in between that, it has like a nice crevice where all the waves go crashing wow. up. You could get wet if you wanted to, but you can see like otters, um, you know, in the morning, there's been a couple times where we see a couple of other lake sea animals um, and things like that. So it's, it's just, it's beautiful. It, it's gorgeous. You get to, you know, two, two, what is it? Two birds, one stone. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and it's just lovely. So for that, you do make a reservation. Um, it's on like either reserve America or, um, one of those campground sites right. that I think that you do, but it's called Montaña de Oro or basically mountain of gold. And, um, they have environmental sites, they have tent camping and I've never seen, um, I've never looked into whether they have RV camping, but I don't think that they yeah, do. I'm not sure if I remember, I've been through there just in the springtime. It's beautiful. Oh. All the wildflowers and. Yeah. And besides that scenery, like, and then that scenery alone is additionally gorgeous. And so it's just, it's beautiful. And you're right next to, um, 
Monterey Bay, you're next to Pismo Beach. I know Pismo Beach has a lot of beach camping, you know, that you can do there too. So it's just, it's so much fun. It's so much fun. There's so much to do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah. what are some things um, gear wise that you liked when you go camping? Some things that you can't live without when you... <laughs> so tent camping? Yeah. Okay. So tent camping, um, A, you better have a really, depending on when you're going camping, where you're going camping, you need to have a fabulous tent. My favorite types of tents are the ones that you can take the whole top off and you can see everything from the top, the rim. Yeah. Normally you get like the ones that are a little bit more inexpensive and you can, you only have like maybe a little yeah. triangle here or there that you can see out of. Um, I learned very quickly going to Montaña Doro that the best way to get your 360 view at yeah. night is to just invest a little bit more into a tent that has that full 360. Like basically it's nothing but mesh from halfway up and you can take that off visualize you know see everything gorgeous make sure that you know mosquitoes whatever aren't coming into your tent at the same time and then you can put it right back on and that's it so that's number one I think if you're going to do tent camping you like you want one of those um secondly always investing in a really good sleeping bag because you yeah. never know when the weather is going to turn <laughs> right and I've um I've camped in Death Valley and Sometimes, <laughs> you know, you think it's going to be only so cold and then it gets 20 degrees below what you thought yeah. it was and you brought the wrong, just the wrong gear. Um, so that's always fun. So making sure, again, it might be slightly more expensive, but it's going to last you anything you'll ever need to go through in making sure that the degrees goes a little bit lower than your regular 30 or 40, depending on where you're going to be camping. Um, those are must haves. And then, um, for sure, my other favorite stuff is to make sure that, um, I will always take, uh, what are those long johns or, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Getting really, really good thermals, um, is always important depending on where you're going to be. Because I think one thing that people don't anticipate because we live indoors all the time <laughs> is that you don't have a heater. And even though you're in a tent, it doesn't get warmer. <laughs> Right, exactly. Right. <laughs> it's right? Just a tent, right? Yeah, it's just it's literally just so that you don't see the neighbor. Right. <laughs> so I mean, and I think if people are going for their first time, um they're those big crazy like 10 people tents, five different, there's no space for that. Like if you can show me a really good tent space for those massive ones people would be fighting over that so I think people uh when I go camping I I, I have camped with those that do that <laughs> and they quickly realize you can't actually put out the whole thing right. it doesn't fit on the site it's just impossible so you know making sure you're thinking about those kinds of things are really important just tent for size know that you're not going to be in there all day the whole yeah. point of tenting is like to be outside in nature um, and having that. So with that said, a really good heater that's propane based, um, you know, that has an inverter that's not going to throw toxins <laughs> at you yeah. inside your tent is always a good idea to just have on hand. Um, and other than that, emergency food, because again, you just never know when stuff's going to happen. Um, and you just want to make sure that you have everything that you're, you're going to be prepped for. Um, I think those are like really, I'm, I'm pretty basic. <laughs> yeah, no, that's good. That's good though. So if someone's like a first time camper, are there like groups or sites or, you know, tips for them? I mean, if they've never done it, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. You know what? If you've never done uh, camping, first of all, get with someone who has, who wants to do the same type of camping that you are saying you want to do and get tips and trips from them. Um, I am aware of a couple of groups. I can't remember what their names are, but Facebook has groups for everything. Um, and there's actually people that will create like a bunch of singles go together or a bunch of couples go together, or, you know, there's different groups. Yeah. For each one. And they'll literally like, hey, we want to do tent camping here, 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 and here. Um, anyone have tips? Anyone want to join? And, you know, they have so much fun with it. Um, and like I said, I think just 
camping in general really helps you to reconnect with others where our busy lives, unfortunately, don't. Yeah. Like, we don't think about it. It's not like an active thought and it's sad. I have to admit to it, I'm one of those because I've lived in my home for almost eight years this year and I hardly know my neighbors. <laughs> no, I, I think that's like, true. So sad across, to it. Yeah, it is sad. It's like, and to go to a campfire, I mean, that's the idea that appeals to me and just, you know, the conversation then is just going to happen. Oh, there's no, there's no way it can't. Um, we like to go to, um, a couple of other places that we did this past year, we did like the whole Lake Powell, the oh, yeah. um, Zion National Park, you know, the whole, like that whole area, we went all the way up to Colorado and came back Arizona um, and did all of that fun stuff. And uh, when you're at the campground, I never realized how many people come from Europe, from South America to come to California, Arizona, Utah. And I was like, what of all places in the world? Why are you here? They're like, everyone comes here for, for your guys' views of all the, like the camping, Death Valley, um, wow. uh, Monument Valley, which is probably one of our favorite places, um, Moab, right? Like all of yeah. these really great places to go. And I could not believe, I, I felt like most people we were running into at the campsites were international. Hmm. Uh, and I was just like, what? You know, yeah, I can't that's believe That's interesting. Yeah. They don't really have what we have here. A, the roads are, um, in talking to them, the roads are not wide enough for RVs, like our regular size RVs. Um, and they don't really have like national parks and things like that. Everything's very cramped. And so I remember talking to one family that was from Germany and they were like, we love coming over here. Everything's so open. And of course, to me, I'm like, I live right outside of LA. And I'm like, what do you mean? We are so, you know, yeah, because we have such, such different ideas of what everything, you know, and I'm sitting here like, I'd love to go see and visit you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you are. Um, but it's just, it's, you know, every place has its, its differences. And I really didn't realize um, until the past two years that we started doing RV camping a lot more with our kids, just because of their age that we've run into so many people from all over Europe, um, Asia that will come over. I didn't know Death Valley was such a huge popular destination internationally um, for the caverns and for all of the things that you can do there, but, you know, it's just, it's pretty amazing. So we've made some really cool friends and acquaintances on the way to just seeing what there is within the States wow. where we live and how so many people really come to admire those same places that we're just taking time out of our busy schedules to go to. So, right. And you're right. Yeah. They're just kind of in our backyard in a way, but we just kind of forget or don't realize how special they may be. Absolutely. A hundred percent agree. A hundred percent. We don't realize how much we actually have just right in our, our, you know, backyards really. Yeah. Yeah. But it's so gorgeous. what do you have for tips on reservations? You mentioned, um, how early do you think people need to think about you know, some of these places, especially oh, yeah. if they have like an RV, I suppose it's a little bit more challenging if you have an RV for some of these destinations. Yes. So there are definitely some major differences between tent camping and RVing when it comes to reservations. And I learned that the hard way two years ago. Um, I was very used to tent camping and just being able to yeah. swing it and we want to go tomorrow or this next week and you'll find something. Um, with RVing, depending on the size of your RV, depending on the year of your RV, I learned that the hard way. Oh. There are certain um, campgrounds or RV parks that have certain requirements, um, one of which was like it can't be more than 10 years old. Really? Um, yeah, I had no idea. And it was ironically, we were trying to go to an RV park right outside of Disneyland and stay there for the week yeah. to take my kids for the first time. And my parents have a newer RV. We did the whole get an older one, refurb, do that whole thing for, for us and our kids. Because they're small, they're not going to take yeah, care of right, right now. Why right. invest in a larger one? So um, 
they made us take pictures of our RV and like do all this stuff. And they're like, oh, yours isn't like all beat up. And I was like, no, it's, you can see that it's visibly older, but it's not jacked up. <laughs> so we had to get approval to get into that RV park. And I was like, are you, and then we got oh. to the RV park and there are some broken down <laughs> jacked up RVs. And I was like, what were they worried about? <laughs> like, yeah. Or what pictures did they send it? <laughs> it's like, yeah. I was just like, well, I don't know if they've been there. And then the, they're the reason for the new rules. I have no clue, but that was the first time we had ever run into that, which I found very um, odd. Yeah. That's um, very odd. Yes. So there will be RV parks that have their own set of rules. So that's one thing to always make sure you book before. The places that are going to fill up, and I mean, like, you need to reserve now for, like, six to nine months ahead, are places like Moab, um, anywhere in Utah, pretty much, because that's where everyone wants to go during spring, summer, and late October. The places that we have gone, uh, we've gone there when it's winter time, and you have a little bit more availability and flexibility, but it will also depend on the size of your RV and what you're looking to do with it depending on your slide outs, if you want, if you have slide outs or not, if you're going to use them or not. Um, but those big places, you know, Yosemite and Sequoia are infamous for having to reserve like a year out. Um, and if you're going with two or more RVs, if you're going with, you know, a couple other people, even earlier, you need to book it. Okay. It can get pretty rough out there. Um, <laughs> if you're not going to um, be part of a RV uh, like membership. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have a membership to the KOA cam um, campgrounds. I think it's like $33 a year or something. Oh, ridiculous. that's nothing. Yeah. yeah it's dirt. And um, you get, you know, access to all their campgrounds and, um, you know, reservations, all of that stuff. And so that's one that we've really liked and that we've um, stuck with. So they will give you sometimes a little bit more priority in being able to get into certain places of their campgrounds. But um, overall, I would say for the most part, especially during on seasons of where you're going with an RV, you've got to book pretty soon and in advance, especially if you're going with more than one RV. Okay. Um, tent camping. On times can get crazy with tent camping, like Montaña de Oro, a couple other tent camping spots we like to go to, they can get pretty crazy in terms of availability. Um, but for the most part, if you're tent camping, you're pretty flexible and you can find something either there or nearby. It's the RV that causes a little bit more <laughs> trouble. Right, a little bit more planning has to go into yeah. it. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So what's on your next go-to list? Or do you have trips planned? Yes, we do. Um, we were actually just talking about that this week since we had to cancel our plans this week. Yeah. Uh, where we're going to next. Um, so every November-ish, we pretty much go to that place near Ridgecrest, which yeah. is like our favorite. Um, so that is always on our list. Um, we are looking to go, we did a real quick drive by this past summer to Lake Powell, but I realized there's so much more to do there that we missed doing um for the allotted time that we had to be there so this time we're planning on going the southern route and actually going through arizona normally we go up through vegas okay. St. Louis, all that way um so this time we want to go the other way and spend more time that way um and then pro probably spend more time at the grand canyon we've only like ever drew it dri like driven through there maybe three or four times on the different right. uh, you know northeast southwest that they have um, and actually stay there and do stuff. There's that train that I really oh. want to do. <laughs> yeah, I've heard about it. Yeah, me too. And so I was like, okay, my kids are getting old enough. They're not going to piss anybody off on this train. <laughs> you know, they can actually, you know, stay quiet and stuff now. Um, so I'm definitely considering that. And for that, you know, you do stay somewhere nearby. Um, we can definitely do that in the RV do the train thing for the three days and then come back and then continue on our way. So um, we definitely want to go back to Lake Powell. Um, that's like major on our list. And we actually want to venture out from Southwest. We want to start going a little bit further East um, and probably a little further North. I'd love to do 
um, more into Colorado because we barely clipped that um, on one of ours. So there's a lot more. My parents are the ones that did like a five week this oh past gosh. year cross country <laughs> and uh, freaked me out <laughs> on one of the times that they left. But um, I definitely want to do a cross country and um, hit up uh, all the national parks. We have our little passport mm, where you get yeah, the stamp. Right, well, right. Yeah. Love it. Are we getting our stamp? Are we getting our stamp? Are we oh, going to get another no. badge? So they have like their little badge of us and everything <laughs> that we do. And they, they love it. They love it. Oh, yeah. So definitely a lot of plans coming up. <laughs> that we'll be doing during the summer. And that's why we're talking about it now. We have to book it now. Right. It's just not, there's not going to be any availability. How young were your kids when you actually started taking them camping and RVing? So we did it rugged when they were four and a half. Really? Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. Because with two of them, I mean, that's like. That was our first, and that was not planned. That one was actually not planned. So they were about four and a half months old. We um, went to Vegas to visit my family, my husband's family. And then I was like, I'm the type that's like, well, we're already here. So yeah. <laughs> my husband hates that. And so um, I sat there and I was like, well, we're all the way in Vegas and we got to drive back. Why don't we go this way? So we actually ended up going to the Grand Canyon and doing the Skywalk. Oh my gosh. Um, with them. So we have like their poor little freezing yeah. <laughs> four and a half month old bodies on the skywalk, which was so, so fun. They don't remember anything. Um, and then we went through Sedona and then Phoenix. And so we stayed in Sedona for a couple of days and we only had our forerunner <laughs> at oh. the time. So it was raining. So, and you know, you can four by it. So we did a little bit of that with them and their poor little car seats. Um, so we did it as early as that. Um, when we started doing our RV camping was about three years ago. So they were about three years old. Um, before that, we did have to do like hotels and stuff. You know, they're little. Yeah. They're deal with what ours can. Right. Um, so yeah, now our RV is termed Mater because they love the, the movie Cars and it's a little older. <laughs> so... <laughs> We call it Mater. Oh, and um, yeah, so they're like, are we going to go in the Mater, mom? Like, are we going to go in the Mater? Like, yeah, we're going to go in the Mater. <laughs> so they love it. The sooner, I think the sooner you get your kids out into nature, like the more you're going to have a hard time getting them out of nature later. Yeah, I think that is all day, every day over Disneyland. See, that's fabulous. And that they look forward to it. And they're actually asking, like, when are we going? I want to be outside. I want to play in the dirt. Oh, that's so amazing. They love it. They love and I it. think it's just a great way, as we all know, to, like, work well. I mean, it's just part of being wellness, you know, getting out of the city and getting away from that. You can almost feel the shift when you drive away from oh, Los yeah. Angeles or these big cities and you head out. You just, you just feel the, you know, it's like, feels calmer all of a sudden it's not so this rush 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 yes and sometimes that freaks people out though because i'm actually in the wellness space and i had to get myself like you need to stop working you need to slow down you do need to go out in nature more than just your 15 minute walk in the morning right yeah. like that doesn't totally count <laughs> no it really doesn't <laughs> And it does, it is a shift at times because yeah. you do hit those quiet periods where you're like tempted to like, oh, I should check my email. Oh, I should, yes. you know, there's somebody I need to call. Oh, I didn't follow up with that. And yeah, that creeps back in. And <laughs> at like a thousand miles an hour because we just don't know how to relax anymore and not stay calm. Like I'm a very calm person, but inside things are like jamming and a hundred thousand tabs are open and it's like how am I going to get this done blah, 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 blah. you know and you get this chronic freeze response and when you go like one of the rules that we do have is that when we're going camping no phones no electronics during the day like if you need to make a call because life is still there or check some emails there are reserves time slots for that and that's it that's all that's allowed and after that you turn it off um so sometimes that's hard for me and I implemented the rule. Yeah, I was just going to say, yeah. 
my husband's or my kids are like mom and I'm like oh. right exactly right exactly it's like just one more I just gotta check one more thing just one more I think we're all guilty of that and we tend to go camping for a long time like two weeks most of the time so um you know it's things are bound to creep up, uh, in terms of things that need to get done or respond to. But I think if you go into it with, this is disconnection time, these are the rules that I'm going to set for myself or for my family or whoever we're going with. Um, and then you also think a little bit about what you're going to fill that time with, because if you get bored and you do have that downtime, which you will have, you have to know how to unstructure it. And it's like, I'm just going to bask in the sun right now and not think about anything. And that's okay. So, um, because I have gone with people that are very much like, I got to go back. I got to go back. And I'm like, go back to what? You know, you're not, you got to learn to disconnect. (laughs) And once they did, they didn't want to leave. And it's, it's, it's an art to be able to do that. It's not as easy as just saying you're going to turn off. No, there has it, to be some intention there and some planning for that. Yeah. So I think that's important. Taking games, you know, like, do you remember what it is to play games or what games you used to play? Right. Yeah, like, right. It's hard. It's hard. And on, honestly, one thing that helped me was having my kids. Um, if, if I didn't have my kids, I don't know that I'd be actively disconnecting at the moment like I should be. And like, I tell patients to be right. I was just going to say, <laughs> so this has been an amazing chat, Denise, but tell people how they can reach out to you. Um, I don't know if you have a website or what your sure. other things that you're doing are in your regular yeah. life. <laughs> yeah. So in, in my, my grown up pants, um, I'm a board certified advanced holistic nurse. And so wellness is our everything that we do and uh, which is part of disconnecting and camping and why we have to make sure that it's planned um, very uniquely <laughs> throughout the year. Um, so our website is alternativesforselfhealing.com. And um, we actually do have a physical wellness center in Upland, California, which is Southern California, um, where we offer a variety of our services and um, some of which are international. We have international clients, um, depending on what services you actually need. So it's tons of fun. We will always, always, always prescribe relaxation and camping (laughs) (laughs) as part of our health coaching because disconnecting is key disconnecting is so key and reconnecting. And when I say disconnecting, I don't even mean that like reconnecting to your circadian rhythm, the earth's energy, you know, and that's only done with being out in nature in true, true nature, not our first world country view of nature. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> um, very it's true. So important. It's so important. And, and all of us need it. It's pretty amazing what it can do for your health with immediate results. No need to wait. So, yeah. yeah it's and that. being outside is free. I mean, you just got to get out there. I mean, people are concerned about money these days. And I think that's like the best thing you can do for your health. Oh, I love this, Denise. This is fabulous. <laughs> so I'll put your contact information, your website in the show notes. And thank you so much for everyone who's joined us. And contact Denise if you've got camping or RV questions, especially with twins. I, I bet she has lots more tips to share. Oh, definitely. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. This was so much fun. Yeah, thanks.